At the end of 1942, an important letter found its way onto Martin Bormann's desk. This was Hitler's personal secretary and one of the most powerful men in the Third Reich. Given his high rank, many people wrote to him asking for help and favors. The letter in question was actually a request for acquittal for an Austrian woman named Helene Kafka. The truly curious thing is that she was a nun accused of plotting against the Führer. Despite the seriousness of the charges, it would not be the first time that a complaint was exaggerated and that an acquittal was due. However, Kafka had been sentenced to death, and at that moment, her life hung by a thread, and the secretary's response could save her or damn her. It was then that Martin Bormann made a decision. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you everything about the nun who faced Hitler. But before continuing, and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. And now, let's continue with today's video. Helene Kafka was born on May 1, 1894 in the city of Brno, located in Austria. She was the sixth daughter of a humble shoemaker, so she grew up far from luxury. When she was barely two years old, her family moved to splendid Vienna, the city that had once been the capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In her teens, she worked as a maid and as a salesperson in a tobacco shop. However, she found her true calling at age 19, when she decided to become a nurse and help others. She quickly got a job at a municipal hospital in the Lanes neighborhood, and it was there that she ran into a group of nuns from the Christian Franciscan order. At the age of 20, following the call of faith, she entered the congregation to turn to religion. She took the corresponding vows, swore to obey God, serve the church, and help her neighbor whenever possible. Sister Kafka lived her life fully clinging to these ideals, and she put them into practice at all times. Although many things would be said about her, no one could ever claim that she was a hypocrite. The Franciscans gave her a new name, Maria Restituta, by which she would be known from then on. Curiously, Restituta had been a martyr who lived in the 4th century after Christ, at the time of the Roman Empire. According to legend, she was captured and horribly tortured on the orders of the Emperor Diocletian. Later, while she was still breathing, she was put on a boat, which the soldiers set on fire and sent out to sea. In a sense, the terrible fate of Restituta foreshadowed the tragedy that Sister Kafka would have to endure centuries later. After our protagonist completed the novitiate and officially became a nun, she decided to return to the Lanes Municipal Hospital. Her interest was not to be locked up in a convent, but to be available to those most in need. At that time, her services were more required than ever, since the First World War left millions dead and many others injured. Men arrived at the hospital with all kinds of injuries, some from the effects of mustard gas or endless shootings. Others presented what is now known as post-traumatic stress due to the shock of living permanently among death and destruction. The unlucky ones had been maimed by cannon shells, or horribly disfigured by flamethrowers. In 1919, after the end of the war, Sister Kafka was transferred to a hospital in the town of Modling, about 14 kilometers from Vienna. There, she was appointed head nurse of the operating room, a position she held for more than a decade. During this period, she witnessed the events that took place in the neighboring country of Germany. National Socialism went from being a marginal political grouping to becoming the most powerful movement in the Weimar Republic. Adolf Hitler became Chancellor in 1933 and, once in power, dedicated himself to turning the nation into a one-party dictatorship. Despite the fact that the main targets of Nazi attacks were Jews, the Führer also harbored a particularly intense resentment towards Christianity. He had been raised by a severe and anti-clerical father, who hated everything related to priests, mass and prayer. In the same way, the Nazi leader developed a skeptical vision of the faith, although in his government he was careful not to irreversibly break ties with the Catholic Church. His caution was due to the fact that he was aware of the importance of religion in Europe and that, if he confronted it directly, a large part of the population could dissupport him. In 1933, Hitler signed a concordat with Pope Pius XI, 
which established that Germany undertook to respect the autonomy of Catholic institutions. However, in practice, the Führer breached each and every one of the clauses of the agreement. Various church leaders were arrested by the Gestapo on charges of immorality, while some were brutally murdered. Religious groups were dissolved and the Hitler Youth promoted the lynching of Christian children in the streets. Catholic schools were prohibited from holding catechetical lessons, and crucifixes were requested to be removed from all public establishments. Over time, the story of Sister Kafka would be intertwined with these issues. In 1938, the Anschluss took place, that is, the unification of Germany with Austria. This last nation was formally entering the Third Reich, something that had been in Hitler's plans for at least two decades. The Führer believed that all members of the Aryan race should live in the same country, so, through a fraudulent vote, the project was approved by 99% positive votes. As expected, the modeling hospital, where Maria Restituta worked, suffered the consequences of the new Nazi government. She had decorated the halls and pavilions of the establishment with crucifixes and Catholic images, something that was unacceptable to the authorities. For this reason, she was required to remove all religious symbols and to adopt an appearance of secularism, that is, not to transmit anything related to faith. This was a first point of tension between our protagonist and Nazism. On the other hand, in Austria the Nuremberg laws began to be applied, a set of anti-Semitic and racist regulations that established differential treatment for Jews, Afro-descendants and Gypsies. Thus, mixed marriages with people from these groups were prohibited, who were also stripped of their civil rights and relegated to the status of second-class citizens. Sister Kafka, seeing how the situation in her country worsened and Nazi discrimination and hatred spread, raised her voice against injustice. She criticized the Nuremberg laws and claimed that Hitler was insane. When asked by her colleagues who worked at her hospital to keep her cool, she maintained that she was a Viennese, and as such, they could never make her shut her mouth. At the same time, she flatly refused to remove the crucifixes from the hospital, although this did not lead, in principle, to direct consequences. The directors of the establishment refused to fire her because they claimed that they had no one to replace her with. In the following years, Maria Restituta maintained the same stern tone whenever she referred to National Socialism and Hitler. Her angry comments finally wore off the patience of a doctor who worked with her at the hospital and who was a Nazi fanatic. The man reported her to the authorities and the Gestapo decided to take action on the matter. On February 18, 1942, when she was leaving the operating room after working on surgery, Sister Kafka was arrested by the secret police and accused of treason and conspiracy against the Führer. In October of the same year, she was tried by a Nazi court which, however, offered her the possibility of releasing her if she resigned from the hospital. Our protagonist remained faithful to her principles and refused to comply with the order. That was how her fate was sealed, and the judges sentenced her to death through a brutal method, the guillotine. The news made a deep impression on the Catholic community in Austria and, as we told you at the beginning of the video, a group of activists wrote a petition for clemency that reached the offices of Martin Bormann. That was Restituta's only chance to be saved, but the decision of the Nazi hierarch was categorical. Hitler's secretary replied that the execution was necessary to intimidate all who dared to oppose Nazism. Maria Restituta remained in prison for almost a year, isolated from the rest of the world. During this period, she wrote a letter in which she said the following, No matter how much we are separated from everything, and no matter what is taken from us, the faith that we carry in our hearts is something that no one can take from us. On March 30, 1943, when she was 48 years old, she was beheaded by guillotine. At present, Maria Restituta Kafka is considered an emblem of Catholicism that faced Nazism. In the year 1998, she was beatified by Pope John Paul II, so she became the first martyr of Vienna. We have reached the end of the video, leave us your comment below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.